most important thing was like when the first leadership theory was coming up into play like what was happening is what people thought about it was uh, that uh, leaders are actually born okay they are born they are god gifted they are god gifted and uh, like when they are uh, when they are born they are born with all these instincts they have all these characteristics so it's i mean it's not that they are made they learn and they become it's any leader whatever they were saying yes it's that okay these leaders are actually being born and uh, anyone who's been born, uh, who is a great leader has it in their gene it's already in their gene that they know about it's there and nobody else can become a leader if you are born with these gene with the it's already there if you're born with all these traits with these characteristics it's there in your family it's there in your gene you are a big leader that's what the main thing was that was the first thing which came up that that was the first theory which was coming up which was saying great man leadership theory great man that is when they said leaders are born great leaders are born they are not made they are not made made means in your lifetime when you actually you learn and you become a much better person and you become much more and much more capable that was not happening they said that if you are born with these characteristics if you have this within you it's in your gene then you are a great leader great leaders are always born they do not have like it's not made so and and the basic that was the first thing that was the first theory that came up that was in the early 19th century when we had early 19th century mid 19th century when we had these things coming about and we have some of these leaders when they give the, the, the examples that came up was abraham lincoln who was the first president of united states of america who gave freedom who held led for freedom of the country we had we have great leaders like mahatma gandhi who led the india to for freedom we have some of the great great chi the chinese uh, leader mao zedong so th that's what they said that these are the examples of leaders who basically have been born with the traits with the characteristics of becoming a leader they are already leader by birth they do not have to learn anything so it's within them naturally it's in their genes right uh are you all able to follow this did you all follow yes ma'am okay yes, okay yes, uh, any questions on this no ma'am anyone no ma'am no ma'am no ma'am no ma'am no ma'am no, ma okay. right so let me go to the next part which is basically the trait leadership theory so the next theory that came out was a trait leadership now the trait leadership theory also is it's an extension of the great man leadership theory which basically said that uh, the, the there's a bit, there's a slight difference here when you talk of the great man leadership theory it is said that leaders are born with this characteristics it's in their genes okay and what is what does the trait leadership says that uh, leadership qualities are they are not always leaders are not always inborn but they acquire they acquire these traits how because because they are a leader they are able to acquire that's the difference great man leadership says they are born with all these traits but trait leadership trait means characteristics trait leadership says okay that the leaders because they are they are a leader that's why they able to acquire these traits which nobody else can do it like you and me we are common people we cannot have these traits because we are not leaders okay and tra trait means characteristics when we talk of characteristics we are talking of the appearance let's say height your weight how you look your appearance your age that is demographic factors your age your education your background family background comes into play economic background like how established are you whether you are coming from a poor family whether you are coming from a middle class family whether you come from a rich family that also came into play they also spoke about your personality how confident are you 
whether you are also aggressive or not certain times you need to take actions now uh, actions in the sense where you just have to take an immediate action you have to lead you know there are a lot of people there which i mean it's quite confusing you really do not know what's going to happen what's not going to happen and uh, you have to make a quick decision so that's also there like you whether you are aggressive whether you can take whether you can be let's say able to take risk how you're going to do it so that these were some of the things and also like when you talk of task whether you are able to achieve the target how fast how efficiently how effectively you are able to achieve the target so that was also there that is also they are talking about that whether you are able to come up with some new ideas that's there how capable are you in the planning how capable are you in putting your plan into practice how are you how capable are you to lead the entire team are you able to gain confidence of your team can you lead them can you identify the resources that is needed what resources who who, who needs these resources and what sort what sort of human beings or human laborers we need at which place how the work has to be done so these are the be this is something which we are talking about and also about like how well how capable are you in interacting with your team members how capable are you in interacting with people outside your organization whether you are a social person or not so this is what it was said and it is said that those who are great leaders will be having these qualities they will be acquiring it either they will be uh, by birth they have it or because they are great leaders they will acquire it in a very short span of time like from a childhood you will see that within them they are already capable of taking lead they are more assertive they are able to do it so this was the difference this is the difference between great man leadership and great leadership and a big example of great leadership is steve jobs who started the apple company now am i clear with all of you or do you have any questions then clear right clear understood ma'am okay yes ma'am okay now when like when we are actually talking of a uh, trait leadership now there are certain questions certain characteristics traits means as i said is like uh, you have these characteristics uh, what are the what are these characteristics one comes where you talk of a great leader is someone who is honest is honest whose integrity in the sense who is someone who's reliable someone who's trustworthy someone who is open to suggestions someone who is yeah i need silence uh, uh, students okay someone who's also say who does not suffer from psychological problems you getting the point psychological problems means what when stress comes you are into trouble you do not know you get so nervous you, we we do it right we become yes. so nervous when things come we become tense we become we become nervous and then but the leader should not be nervous should not be tense even when the situation is worse still the leader should be able to handle situations right someone who should be able to motivate who self motivated who is able to motivate the employees think about their welfare someone who is self confident who knows who believes in themselves even if you make something wrong say make a mistake still you are confident like yes okay you are able to defend your mistakes you are able if you are able to actually say okay there was a mistake and this is what we do so you able to do that you should be confident in your things you should be very clear with your ideas okay and someone who should be also be able to have a good judgment able to judge the situation not be biased but looking into a situation from different angles and start judging like only when you look into a situation of different angles can you actually start giving your opinion can come it becomes easier you should be able to have that power that should be also there and uh, also when you talk of uh, someone who should be highly ambitious ambitious in the sense someone who should be able to achieve think higher not just for themselves but for the company for the employees all the stakeholders should be able to do that okay so any questions here do you have anyone has any questions or are you no. clear with it clear ma'am clear ma'am yeah ma'am 
Okay. Clear, okay. ma'am. Clear, ma'am. Okay. Uh, let's go to the uh, next part. Do we go to the next part? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. The third yes, type. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. The third type of leadership theory that we have is called behavioral mm -hmm. leadership theory, which came up a little later and uh, which was during the 1940s and 1950s, which basically said it was a totally contradictory thing to the other uh, first two, the trait leadership and great man leadership theory, which says that leaders are not always born. You can be a common person. You may not have all these characteristics, but over a span of time, through your experience, you learn. You learn and you become a good leader. Like this is where we as common people, we come the human beings, we come into play. Like some of you, like you may be what happens as students, you, you are quite nervous, you do not know that what's going to happen, what's not going to happen. And but as you finish your college, you start graduating, and after graduation, once you face the real life, life teaches you to become confident, life teaches you to become much more aggressive, life teaches you to believe in yourself, life teaches you to come up with something new and you are a much you become a more matured person you are able to lead a team and that's where you become a leader so you're made how do you how are you made through the experiences in your life and here what happens is when we talk of the great leaders what a behavior leader character leadership theories this is where we say that leaders like you can always have something which are like either uh, you can be actually thinking about the work when the, you be a great a leader is when they think about the work that has to be done or someone who's thinking about the, their people, the company, their, their employees. So behavioral leadership theory, in other words, can be again divided into two parts. One, which is with respect to task oriented. Now, task oriented is where you have some repetitive tasks, say, let's say planning, coordination, assigning of tasks. How do you do that? Based on your workers' skills. We have discussed this, worker skills, your experience, and you need to have skilled workers. You need to have skilled employees. Each is capable of doing a one specific work. Now you know there's a work which is coming up. There has to be a planning which has to be done. There has to be some coordination which has to take place. There are implementation has to take place. And you also need to have people who will be monitoring it, getting the feedback. And then it comes back to you. And then you finally have a discussion and make the, final, make the changes. So what's that? It's task, task oriented. So you need to associate, allot right people at the right place. That's important. Right people at the right place is important. You have to allot them. Otherwise, it's quite difficult. You need to put it. You should know who is capable of what. Who is capable of doing multitasking? Who is not capable of doing multitasking? Someone who's highly specialized for some specific work you need. Only that person, nobody else. Only that person. And there are some people who you know is more capable of doing say, multitasking, like working between departments. You should be also able to actually judge how the departments are, should be interrelated, how the work should go on. So you should know who should be placed at which position, who should the work, then the work has to be decentralized because you as a leader of the company, you cannot do everything. As a, when you have a small company, you take care of everything. But big companies, you cannot take care of everything. Work has to be sent decentralized. You have you have different different layers of management. We've discussed that in class, the different layers, and the work gets decentralized, and you should be knowing who should be heading which department, how, what is the work. And that all depends on your vision, your long-term goals, how you're framing your strategy along with your team. What is the vision of the company? Where do you want to see your company 10 years from down the line? And the work, once that is done, then it starts getting decentralized. Different departments know what their individual goals are in order to achieve the overall goal of the organization. So that's how it should be done. And it's you as a leader, you should be knowing who should be put in which place. If you do not know, if you're not capable enough to do that, 
then you are not a leader. You fail to become a leader. So this is what we say is task oriented when it's task related. The other thing comes into account, other, part, other type of behavioral leadership theory is when we talk of it's people, people oriented. People oriented is where you need to take care of the needs, the welfare of your staff. You cannot treat them as a commodity. It's not that you cannot exploit them. It's you cannot do that. That is not done. Like it's there, they are there, they're going to do your work, but are you taking care of them? They are part of your company, they are part of the family. You say that we are all family in an organization. So when you are part of them, how do you do? You take care of your parents, your elderly people, your sisters, brothers, whoever is there in your family. So your employees are also your family. You have to look after their welfare. So which means what? Providing them with proper working conditions, providing them with proper sanitation, providing them with like a, let's say health, health facilities, taking care of their family. Like it's, it, should, it should be, you should have the facility where they can put their kids to schools. That facility should be there. You should be able to help them. There should be some sort of entertainment also because they have their family. So even if they do not have a family, so after work, you should be able to go and actually be able to have some sort of enjoyment. Everyone needs some relaxation. So have you thought of it? If someone is doing really good job, so are you really, really able to uh, recognizing their work? Are you giving them some benefits? Are you giving them recognition which motivates them? That's also motivation for the others who says that, okay, that if we really do good, if we really do well, our bosses are recognizing us. So, and also take their opinions into consideration. You need to take their opinions into consideration, like, because they're the ones who are actually interacting with the customers, the suppliers, the government, the rules and regulations, whatever problem is coming up. They're the ones who are interacting. So when they are interacting, so what happens is, like, they're the ones who are giving the feedback. They're the ones who are actually taking up all the responsibility. They are the ones who have to take the brunt. If someone is not happy, they come, they do not come to your office and shout. They come to the employees and they start shouting. So you need the, the other ones who are doing dealing with it and they give feedback based on how the work is going, what is not going well, what is still going well. And you need to take that feedback in a positive way. When you take feedback in a positive way, then what happens is then you can actually start revising your decision. Think over taking those those suggestions into consideration, those feedback into consideration, you start deciding, you start making changes. That's how it works. So that's what we say is people oriented. Okay, uh, any questions up here? Tell me, is there anyone mm -hmm. who has any questions here? Anyone who has any doubts, queries? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So basically, you know what? When we talk about behavior leadership theory, it's all of us, all of you. Anyone can become a leader. Anyone. It's through your experience. You may be not so confident or you may feel so nervous. Some of you do feel nervous and we feel it's fine. Like even I, after so many years, I feel nervous at times. It's, it's quite part of it. But you learn. We all learn through this. And that's how we become better. You become mature. Okay. Uh, okay. We go to the last uh, theory that we have. Last theory that we have that is called the managerial grid model or the leadership grid. So I'll show you. Uh, do you all have the PPT in front of you? I'll show you that picture because I want to explain to you with the help. Yes, ma'am. So yes, I'm just showing you, showing you that picture. Okay. Uh, Okay. okay. Just a moment, please. Okay. This is where. Can you see this? No, ma'am. Can you see yes, now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, see, see, see. This is yes, where I, the managerial grid the model or the leadership grid. Okay, so what basically this is the latest one that we have. 
where see on the uh, y axis it's it's like um the graph on the y axis we have people concerned leaders concerned about their people and as it's the lowest is here and it goes up that's a high and on the x axis what we have actually up here is uh where we talk about uh the concern the task okay so that is where we have it this this is where it is the task it starts from low and goes up high now there are five different types of managers that comes up the first that we come up is is this low part where you see the concern for people up here it's very low and it's also low task so what exactly this this means is this is the manager who are this is where this is where i'm talking about this is the manager who is least interested about the people about the production they are just concerned about their own career about their own jobs they want to pro pro just protect their own position their own power their their uh, let's say their position in the society in the organization their jobs they do not want anyone to just cross them they just want to retain their position they do not want that's all they are they are just self it's self interested person so what basically happens up here is they are not bothered whether people are working or not whether they have a you have a proper vision or not or whether the job is really being implemented in the right way whether people are in the right position or not they just have no concern no concern for their own people on this town their staff or no concern about their production so this is a very negative thing that happens negative thing on an organization okay and uh, this the this is the first one now the second thing that comes up here is where we talk of the country club country club lead manager is where we have if you see the it's up here so people and for people is quite high but low task so this is a person this is a leader who is more concerned about their employees more concerned about their employees not so much about the production not so much it's more concerned about their own people concerned about their as i was talking about their welfare their needs like what they want and what they do not want and they try to motivate okay so they are the ones who first see that whether their own people's needs are met or not whether they have any problem or not and then they feel that if employees are happy work will also be done now this is again you know it's not so good in the sense because production is low up here if you see if you, you should be concerned about your employees but if the production is low means what there's no profit how do you pay how do you move? how do you move ahead that's a problem that's a big problem that comes up so that that's where the problem comes up so the next thing that comes up here is when we talk about if you see this position let's look into the authority or obedience manager is where you see it's they are least concerned about the people because it's down here it's low but okay. high task is high oriented which means these employees these managers do not bother about their employees they treat their employees as commodities there's no scope for feedback you are treated as commodities you have been exploited that these managers are only concerned about profit or oh, we just want profit you have to do this we are not bothered how you do what problems you have that is not our problem it's you are here we you get paid and you have to do this work that's what they say they have nothing else to think about so this is basically the thing and this is also not good for an organization because what happens up here is people are bound to leave they are not happy you're torturing them you're making them work let's say over time going on and you do not recognize it you have to do it if you don't do it you are being thrown out you are just thrown out of your organization you you lose your job so that's that's again not the right thing and up here when we say a team manager if you see this is the balance where we have high people 
that is they are concerned highly about the people and employees and they are also concerned about the work so this is a balance which means that this is a leader who is keeping a balance between earning profit coming up with new ideas moving ahead but parallelly thinking about the employees welfare treating them as part of the family and also saying that expecting them to give come up with some feedback open discussion so it's a team team person this the leader up here is a team proper team leader like goes along with the team and he or she feels that if the if the team fails organization fails so the organization belongs not just to the leader but to everyone who's part of it so that's a there's a big balance up here between the employees and the work the production okay and in the middle if you see this is middle of road manager middle of road manager is where you see that somewhere in the middle it's average concern for the people average concern for the production it's there it's not high so what happens that they are actually thinking they and well, they do think about their people and they are also thinking about the production part they do not have that capacity or capability to think of something big okay work will go on we will learn let it be as it is by happy people are happy we are working together we are not so ambitious we do not it's fine if we are if we can get some uh, the basic money it's fine for us so this again is not good because there's no scope for you to grow in this region like of course your managers are listening to you but there's no scope for you to grow we have cases where we find that sometimes leaders uh, like we have worked in an organization employer is good but there's no scope for us to grow because there's no new no opportunity this is where it is this is where you do not have much opportunity because leaders are also concerned with what it is okay any questions anyone has any questions on this no ma'am no ma'am no ma'am okay no ma'am no ma'am okay. no ma'am no ma'am uh no ma'am okay so uh this is basically where we need top of the different the managerial grid uh, leaders okay now my question to or a few up here is um I just wanted to ask you a question that is a uh, we in this managerial grid leadership model that we saw we saw five different types of leaders right so uh what do you think like uh what happens a question to all of you now this is where you can answer me like let's take up the first case where we talk of uh, someone who is actually a impoverished manager right where they have least concern for their employees or task what effect can that have on an organization if you are such a leader what do you think how would it affect you you all can answer me how would it affect you no question not clear not clear okay impoverished manager where they have a manager who the a leader who does not have any concern for the production neither any concern for for the your, for the for your employees right mm -hmm. if such if for such a manager if you were, if you are if you are such a manager what do you think how would your organization how would it affect your organization what do you think uh organization will not run in proper manner ma'am okay if such managers are there and if they operate uh, the companies carelessly then it may lead to the shutdown of the company or the company might not run as efficiently as it is supposed to run and right. even the employees uh, that are working under this particular leader might not be as happy as uh they are, as they used to be and um they might not be satisfied with the, the tasks they are given and the remunerations they are rewarded later on right wait anyone else wants to try or uh, is that yeah, um, the company is good really go down madam 
Okay. <laughs> so basically, that's when you're right when you said this. So what happens? This company is going to head for a total uh, lockdown, right? Yes. Oh, yes. That's what yes. happens. Okay. <clears throat> now the second thing that comes up is where we talk of the country club uh, manager. Country club manager is where the manager is thinking, is concerned about their own people, but less concerned about the production, right? What happens? Yes, how? Do, what happens? Uh, how would that impact an organization? If you, uh, if uh, we have a, you work in a company where you. The man, your leader is concerned about your welfare, a task not so concerned. How would that affect? What do you think? The com the company may not be able to sustain for a longer duration. Mm. Right. Anyone else wants to say? Or I is that? Yeah. Just I think the com I think the company will run a loss because they would be more concerned about the employees rather than the production. So they would spend more money for the safety of employees. Use of efficient resources. Right. right. So basically what's happening is, you know, there's drainage of wealth. I mean, when you pay, the manager in such a case will have to pay from their own pockets at some point of time. Yeah, you, high salary and low. Yeah, high salary and low? Outcome, madam. Yes, okay. high salary, low outcome means what? It's also going to head for a loss. Because loss. Loss. Yeah, manager has to pay from their own pockets, right? Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Now, what happens when you talk of a leader who is, uh, say, a dictator, right? Where uh, what happens in that case? Dictatorial regime, which is authority compliance manager. What happens there? Where they are not concerned about the people just thinking of the profit. So, how do you think that's going to affect an organization? If you work in an organization, your bosses are not bothered whether you are sick, whether you are not sick, whether you have problem. You just have to work. Because it's probably, you get paid for it, by the way, right? So what do you yeah. think? Uh, there is a chance so, that people. Okay. Yeah, tell me, tell me. So. Like Nimo, you can. No, you can start. Sonam has started, so you can start and then. Uh, I think I think that the people will lose interest in working. So even if they are uh, effective enough to work, but if the leader is not taking an initiative action to. Con to concern about them, so the business would be not that much effective, or it might run into a losses. Right. That's that's true. That's true. Right. Yeah. The employee will not give their best. Okay. Uh, anyone else wants to say? Even even employees. <laughs> one by one. Come one by one. Yeah. Tell me. Uh, even if the company is uh. A productive one, or it, it is a company with a higher goodwill. The employees will start quitting their job now. Right, right, right. But, um, you know, employees will get demotivated, madam. Yes, that's true. You know. Be, yeah, tell me, tell me. Then there will be uh, no good outcome in the company. However, the company is good. <laughs> right. right. So. In this case, yeah, tell me. <clears throat> uh, the leaders are only concerned about the profit. So I yeah. think this will discourage the employees for treating them as uh, commodities. But the, right. It means that there is less concern about the people. So probably right. it's ineffective. Right. So, anyone else the same? Or, uh, uh, so, no, yeah. if, the, uh, if there is low people concerned about, if the manager concern low about the people and the much pressure on the work the people who are who have skilled who are skilled and talented they will be demotivated and they won't be able to achieve the company goals right 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 so basically what happens up here you know you get paid salary is not a problem you get highly paid and you're so satisfied with your salary but you are not actually happy this is a condition where you're not happy because you're being exploited. And that can be a problem also. And you, at some point, you feel, no, I need my own happiness. Salary is there, but if I'm not happy in the workplace, then I don't want to work. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's go into the middle path. The middle path manager, where they, it's average concern for employees as well as on the task. What do you think happens in that case? There will be no scope of growing, ma'am. No scope of growing. Okay. Anyone else wants to say anything? 
no okay uh so basically this is again what happens is you are happy with your employer employer is good because employer is taking care of you but what is there there's no scope for growth and it is something which has a negative effect on your career so that again is not the right thing okay and the last thing that we actually have that is where we talk about when we talk about the the last part where where we we said that it is a uh, we are talking about the team manager or the team management right where we have, where there's a balance between high concern for people and high concern for production so what do you think that happens what what could the be company, yeah. uh, the company can maximize its profit at the same time retain its employees right because the organization belongs to everyone right exactly exactly so yeah tell me Both companies have employees who survive for a long time, madam. Right, right. Team management <clears throat> always followed by every business because it is concern concern to employees, and it is also concern to the productions of business. So, uh, if they follow the team man manager, right, uh, there will be success in business, and the growth of business will also take, and they will survive for a long time. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly, but you know what? It's we are not always lucky to have such an organization where bosses are really taking care, and parallelly there's enough scope for uh, growth. It doesn't happen always. Yes. That's the ideal situation, which doesn't happen always. Okay, but of course there are cases where you do have it, and if you look into Google, Google is one where it's really successful because of this. They are they are concerned about their employees. They do take care. They get rewarded, and they are also focused on their work. They know what's going to happen. There, people are coming up with new ideas. That's now. That's why Google is an organization which is operating today throughout the world. Okay. Yes. Right. Yes, ma'am. Any any other questions on this? Anyone have any questions? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, no questions, madam. No okay. questions, madam. Okay. No so questions, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so if you do not have a question, what I would want to do is, uh, I hope everyone has your case study in front of you. Do you have it? Yes, madam. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I would like to discuss a little on the case study. And uh, so, <coughs> did you read the case properly? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Yeah. So yes, ma'am. So what basically it's talking about? It's as you said. I remember last time when we wrote also in the class. When I asked you what is about your set, it's about where we talk about the employee biases and how they are being mistreated, right? When yes, ma'am. Treat your customers, and that's where the problem comes up. And you see, you saw also a leader, the owner of the company. What steps the owner was actually taking, right? Okay. Yes, ma'am. So. Let's actually go into the questions, right? You have the. What is the first question that you have? Tell me. Do you think the CEO took the right measure to address the management problem. problem? Yeah. So, what do you think? What do you think? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma right yes and no doesn't work. You have a reason why. <laughs> what do you, what do you think? Yes, if you say yes, why do you think so? No, why do you think so? Yes, it's what makes a leader <clears throat> culture of leader. Right. So the the you feel that that's the right measure that the leader has taken, right? Is that what? Yes. It yeah. So it looks like, but you know, again, if you actually look into the situation, that you see some of the critics were saying that do you see the last sentence, the last part of the case where it says. Also, some of the critics said that they were wondering whether this is the right, this is the right measure, whether this would work or not. Okay. Yes. So it's uh it's not just only like when you say that it's a uh, uh, giving a training to them, but it's also something which has to be there in the HR policy. It should be there within like the policy manual should be there. It's I mean you know what happens like when you are an employee in an organization, right? when you are an employee in an organization and you do not know about the rules and regulation of the organization you do not know the do's and don'ts right so what is yes. needed at that time 
question is the company should have a hr manual hr manual which would say these are the do's these are the don'ts this is a work culture this is what you have to do this is what is expected from you so this is how it should be going about so not just giving a training later on but it should be already there from within before from beforehand it should be if there should be a written document it should be documented it should be there so that any employee who's coming for the for the joining the organization should undergo that training right at the beginning should have that manual on hand they should be aware of it and then it becomes and then if they create problem despite learning everything knowing everything despite going to the training and despite that if they misbehave then proper action has to be taken okay so action yeah. should be taken but that is not enough it should be there before and if you do not know what are the rules and uh, rules what are the do's and don'ts what you have to do what you do not have to do then it becomes problem are you getting the point Yes, yes ma'am. So it has to be both sides. You have to think from both the sides. So that's the first part of it. Now, what about what about the second question? What what does the second question say? Tell me. What according to you, you could have been some some alternative measures? Right. What according to you could have been some other measures? Exactly. So what do you think? What could have been? What do you think? What do you think? one definitely as i said about, uh, the uh, you have you, there should be hr manual there should be an employee manual which should be there right proper training should be there right and what else what do you for he could have asked the suggestion from the staff whether his suggestion is right or wrong okay so that means also to have a feedback have a discussion have a feedback and come up with some solution which would be the best at that time right to handle because that is not a, that is not only a temporary uh, problem it's a long term so long term problem which needs to be addressed right so that is that's there right hotel making a quick response uh, to any actual complaints of nepotism right that's there monitoring what monitoring proper monitoring we were just talking about you know like planning implementation and monitoring that has to be proper monitoring that has to be there right anything else what do you think uh, equality in work and opportunities ma'am right that's true any other thing Advice. what about the Yeah. What about the rewards? Reward. Yeah. Reward. Like if those who are violating the rules of the organization, they get penalized, right? Yes, ma'am. And ma those who are actually really not being biased, being able to take care of the customers, like <laughs> really well, so and doing well, they get recognized for it. <laughs> that that also helps. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So, so, are you clear with this? Are you clear with the case? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma ma so, what I is there any question? Anyone has any question? No, no ma'am. Yes. Do we have to submit our case studies? Yeah, you have to submit today. Like right now. like uh, it does i we will close today's uh, the google meet session today okay right now so what i want you all to do is right away after this go to your google classroom start writing your answers and start it on the google on the classroom as well as on the vle okay and yes, uh, yes. yeah and i have some students up here i have a name here uh just a moment please where are these yeah टंडन दोजी वांगचोक केमा दोजी पूनम जामशो राइट एंड नाउ एंड समथिंग यू ऑल हैव स्टिल नॉट सबमिटेड अपलोडेड योर द प्रीवियस असेसमेंट ऑन द वीएलई सो व्हेन यू आर एक्चुअली सबमिटिंग योर आंसर्स राइट अवे ऑन द वीएलई प्लीज अपलोड द अदर टू आल्सो ओके 
Is it clear? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Okay. So we end our class like the Google Class Meet today, the classroom, and you just go go to your go open your Google Classroom and start working. I'm there online on the Google Classroom. Any questions? If you have any queries, if you have, just write it down. I'll clarify it while you're answering the uh, write it down answer. And in the Google Classroom, I'm also going to write it for you. What will be the next? Next Tuesday's morning class when we have on when uh, next Tuesday morning class when we have, I'll tell you also uh, what what are the portions that we need to just go through it and then we uh, we will have the class. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Right. Yes, ma'am. And this is how and this is how it's going to go about uh, it. The first part will be where we have this uh, the video chatting and then the second part will be some work will be given to you where you work on it. There are some questions on how. Based on the portions that we have studied, so that you can and you will have to submit that. Okay, right? Thank you, ma'am. Okay, ma yeah, see you next week. And thank you, ma'am. 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 Thank you, ma'am.